In today's video, I will be showing you how to crochet this easy mason jar cover. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment down below. I like to do this holding two strands of four weight yarn together. Now, everybody's going to be a little bit different depending on tension and everything like that, as well as yarn. So this yarn that I'm using here, the soft and shiny, is a four weight, but I feel like it's very thin where this uh, Craft Smart Value Neon is a little bit thicker, but it is also um, defined as four weight. So depending on this, you know, type of yarn, your outcome may be a little bit different, but it should still fit. Now the yarn or the hook size that I'm going to be using is a 5.5 millimeter or an eye crochet hook. Now I'm using my Pearls crochet hooks. Um, right now I really am loving these. I have just started using these recently. They are fabulous. I will have a link for those in the description box down below. I also will need a pair of scissors as will you, so make sure you have those on standby. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. To begin, you do want to start with a magic loop or a magic ring. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a link right above here that you can click on and it will take you to my video of how to do this. Otherwise, you can chain three and then join into the beginning chain to make your loop. Now from here, we are going to chain up two, one and two. This will count as a stitch. From this point, you want to make 10 double crochets into the ring. And to make a double crochet, if you don't know, you simply yarn over, go into the loop, pull up a loop. Now you'll have three loops. Remember, we are working double strands. It can be a little tricky sometimes. We're going to yarn over, pull through two. Remember, double strands. Yarn over and pull through two, just like that. Now we're going to make 10 of those in total. So we just did one. So go ahead and make nine more double crochets into the ring and then meet me back at this video. When you have your 10 double crochets, let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then remember this chain counted as a stitch. So in total, this will be 11 stitches. From this point, you want to grab your yarn right here. And if you follow along with the magic ring, then at this point is where we want to close off. I like to stop for a second and actually just tie a knot. Once you have that secured, you can tie, or excuse me, sew in your ends now, or you can do it later. Um, at this point, we are going to join with a slip stitch and then we're going to chain. That's how we're going to do the beginning of every row, which is why we don't need a stitch marker. So here's the chain one and two, okay? So we are going to join with a slip stitch right into the chain two, the top of that, okay? Now we will chain up two. This is going to count again as our first um, double crochet. Now we want to increase in this row. This is the only increase row that we have. So we're going to be placing two double crochets into every single stitch around. So we're going to yarn over and back into that same space where we slip stitch and chain three. We're going to go directly back into that stitch and we will place a double crochet. So just like that. Now we will yarn over and go into the next stitch, making sure that we're going through, you know, remember we're using two strands, so we're going underneath all of those stitches there. And then we are going to place two double crochets into that same space as well. And then we're going to do that all the way around. At the end of row two, you will have a total of 22 stitches. So go ahead and do that all the way around and then meet me back at this video. At this point, 
you will have a total of 21 double crochets plus this chain two, which equals 21 because we are counting that as a stitch. Now, like we did before, um, we're going to join into the top of that chain. So make sure you count your stitches because I don't want you to accidentally go into this slip stitch right here and then have too many stitches and then this come out funny. So that is going to be my one really big trick and tip for this video if you are a beginner is make sure that you're not uh, double crocheting into this slip stitch and increasing by two too many stitches. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And then remember we have this chain right here which equals 21. So just really make sure that you have the appropriate amount of stitches at the end of row two. And at this point, it's going to be pretty much um, a basic repeat. Uh, actually, this next row is not a repeat row. Excuse me, sorry. So what we're going to do here for round three is we are going to slip stitch into the top of that chain two like we did before. Just like that and we are going to chain up two because that's how we are going to begin every row like I said for this round three we're going to be working into the back loops only so if you see and I know it might be a little hard because we are working with double strands but let me actually just pull my stitch out here but this is where we would normally be working is just straight straight on through here but you see we kind of have this this V right here so when we're working we're going to be only going into this back loop and leaving this front one so what this is going to do is it's going to kind of help us build up sideways and build up like the wall for our cup cozy so yarn over go into that back loop draw up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two more loops. Now we're going to do this. We're not going to increase or do anything in this row other than working in the back loops only. And we will just place one double crochet into the back loops of every single stitch. Okay, just like this. I'll do a few more stitches here with you before I jump off of camera and finish the rest. So again, into the back loop only. So it's gonna leave this little bit left right here in the front of your work. That's how you know that you're going into the back loop. And if you're not paying attention like me, you're gonna pull um, out your stitches and mess it up. So don't do that. So there we go. So go ahead and do that all the way around and I will meet you back here for round four. Now remember, we do not want to double crochet into the space that is our slip stitch from our last row. Um, so just really make sure that you count your stitches. You should have 20 stitches plus our chain one or chain two. Um, so just really make sure that you're keeping an eye on that. Now at this point, we want to slip stitch into the top of our chain two. Just like so and then we are going to chain up two it looks like I split my work so let me fix that really fast there we go and then we chain two like I said at the beginning of every row so now all we're going to do is work one double crochet into the top of every single stitch we're working through both loops now and nothing, nothing fancy until we get to our very last row. Um, so go ahead and actually work um, a total of five of these rows. I was doing six. Um, you can actually do six rows, I guess, actually. Just go ahead and work a total of six. So we've already done one. So work five more rows. So you will have six in total. Um, and just work double crochets. We're going to have nine rows in total before we do our final row along the top. So go ahead. As you see, it's kind of forming its little, little dot here. So we have one, 
to go ahead and work um, the next few rows until you have a total of six rows up the side. I hope that makes sense. To better explain what I meant in the last clip, here is our first one, uh, first row, our second row. Here is our third row that we worked um, into the back loop only. And then, so then up the side, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. In total, we have nine rows. Now I went ahead and I grabbed a stitch marker for the next part of this video, which we are just going to be doing a reverse single crochet or a crab stitch. So to do this one, we are going to slip stitch in to the top right there. Now, this is a little funky, so make sure you give yourself a little bit of lee leeway. Now, normally we would be working to the, um, to the left side of our work and working in the round, but now we're actually going to be working to the right side of our work, um, which is why it's called a reverse single crochet. So I'm actually just going to slip this or skip this slip stitch and into the last double crochet that we made, I'm just going to make a single crochet. Now, it's nothing fancy. We just simply want to go into that stitch. And then we want to make sure that we yarn over. We're going to be grabbing up our, um, our yarn here. This first one's going to be a little tricky. So yarn over, pull up a loop. So now we will have two loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through both loops. Now this stitch can be a little tricky if you've never done it before, and if this is a little bit too complicated or too hard, you can stop here. You can totally tie off your yarn and it will work. I just like how it gives it a nice little bit of an edging. Now at this point, I'm gonna grab my stitch marker and just place that in just so that we know where our first stitch is. Now, um, if you are having a hard time, no worries, you guys. I am going to be doing this multiple times so you can kind of watch how I do it before you try to do this yourself. Now into this next stitch here, I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to place my hook into this double crochet. We're going to yarn over pull that through so that we have, like I said, two loops on the hook. We are using two things of yarn, so that may get a little bit confusing, but it's definitely just the two loops here. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook. Now we are just going to continue to do that. So I'm just, yarn, you know, pulling through like normal yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. So this is how you do a single or a reverse single crochet for the crab stitch. So going into this stitch here, we're just going to go in, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook. And it gives it like this nice little edging here. It just kind of makes it a little bit tighter. But like I, um, let's see, I do have one that I can show you. And I didn't add the edging. And either way is totally fine. However, I think it just gives it a nice little bit extra. So if that's something you do want to do, continue to do this all the way around. If not, go ahead and end your row with a slip stitch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done and then I will put it on the cup so you can kind of see what the finished product of what we made together looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here. I went ahead and did that crab stitch all the way around. At this point we have this weird little gap going on and what we can do is we're actually just going to slip stitch where our um, slitch, stitch marker is. I don't know why I keep having a hard time saying that. Um, so we are just going to oops, find that stitch and go in there. It's going to be a little hard and we want to make sure that we get this tight. So pull up a loop and then we are going to pull through. 
just like that. Now I'm going to take out my stitch marker. Sorry, it was being a little difficult there. And then I'm gonna chain up one chain here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail to sew in, grab my scissors and go ahead and cut that. And then I like to actually go in and then just make an extra tighter little knot here and then we can go ahead and sew that in later. But that is what it looks like when you are all finished, you guys. Now, it is going to be a little tight when you first put it on, but it will stretch out. So let's go ahead and do this together. And da -da -da -da. like I said, they do stretch, which is why we do it a little bit tighter because we don't want it to end up falling off of our cup after multiple uses. Um... And there you go, you guys. That is what it looks like once it is all finished. Now, I like to, this is actually probably going to be my new cup one. I like to put my crochet hooks in here and then I keep them up on my thing. Otherwise, I have had a bar reach out to me that serves their drinks in mason jars. And I just, you know, went ahead and crocheted some cup cozies for them. So if you guys liked today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what color you guys made yours in. I would love to know what color you guys did. And I will see you guys all next time for another video. Make sure to take a look around here because there will be some videos popping up of other tutorials that I have done, maybe some vlogs. Go ahead and check those out because I do have a lot of great videos here on my channel. And I will see you guys all next time for another tutorial. Thanks so much.